Okay, we're going to try this again. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Heather here. And I'm just joining you on our fourth day of our Supercharge Your Marriage Gratitude Challenge. And this is accountability time as we go through each day of The Magic, the book by Rhonda Byrne. And yesterday's challenge was all about relationships, which is perfect for our group. And as we're striving to improve our marriages, restore our marriages, and strengthen and improve our relationships. So I'd love to hear how you did yesterday. How, what kind of gratitude did you feel? Who did you choose? What kind of a difference did that make in your interactions with those loved ones? Um, for me, I just felt so much love in my heart as I looked upon the picture, I was on my phone, <laughs> of the three people that I chose and I could feel that love expanding in my heart, almost like a physical energy that could just go out and wrap someone in a big warm hug. And my interactions with those people were um, very warm and, and just wonderful. And I even reached out to someone I hadn't talked to for a little while and just let them know how much I deeply appreciate them and what they kind of impact that they've had in my life. I'm still doing the 10 things I'm grateful for every day. So how are you guys doing with that? Are you writing down what you're grateful for and why? What kind of a difference is it making for you? Yesterday, one of the ones I wrote down, I was a little grateful for my alarm clock <laughs> because I wouldn't be able to get out of bed on time without it. Um, and I take a challenging situation sometimes and I like to turn it around in my brain. So a challenging situation for me is that I still have a little baby that gets up at night. And so instead of being really frustrated, you know, at three in the morning when she's crying and I have to go get up and make a bottle, I turn that around in my brain. Okay, what can I be grateful for right now? And I thought about, okay, here I am making the bottle. It's I'm so tired, but what can I be grateful for? And even just like, you know, I was like, I'm grateful for this formula. Um, losing a breast to breast cancer and having multiple surgeries, I'm not able to breastfeed. And so I'm grateful that I have formula that I'm able to give my baby that can nourish her. And I'm grateful for that invention because without it, we'd be in a sorry state. So that's just a small example of one of those daily little challenges that we have, something that we don't really love to do or something that we um, find a little bit difficult to do. But as we turn it around in our mind and we think about what can we be grateful for, soon those blessings far outweigh the inconveniences. They far outweigh the challenges. I know from experience that you cannot hold two energies at the same time. So especially in our relationships, we can use this, that if there's something you're stressed about, if there's something that you are in pain about, and you kind of think about that and have that energy in you, that emotion of the frustration, of the fear, um, the tension that is there. And then now think about something that you're grateful for about that person, something that you deeply appreciate. Maybe it's a time in your life that they, that they stood by you or they supported you. Maybe some of your happiest memories are with that person and you wouldn't have those if they hadn't been there. And so then fill your mind with that gratitude. Think about how deeply those those times mean to you and how their support meant to you. Think about all of those blessings that have come into your life because of that person. And as that feeling of gratitude envelops you, you cannot hold the thing that you were stressed about, the thing that you were upset about at the same time. It's impossible, right? We can only hold on to one energy. I even posted a YouTube video about this years ago talking about my fight with cancer that you choose your energy. You choose either the energy that's going to support life and love and happiness, or you choose the energy that's its opposite. But either way, it's your choice, and we have the ability to choose it at any time. Hey, Rosalene, Amber, Jessica, Kelly, everyone else that's joining. Um, good to see you guys this morning. Hope you're doing well, and hope that you're appreciating this challenge. Now, someone in the group messaged me yesterday, and they're like, I just don't even have time to do this. <laughs> and, oh, honey. <laughs> I want to call that out right there because if you feel like you don't have time to do this, if you don't feel like you don't even have, you know, $14 that you can go and buy this book, if you feel like this is silly or you feel like it's not going to work, if you feel like it's too little too late, if you feel like it's not going to make a big difference, like I said yesterday, you can either have your excuses or you can have the results that you want. You cannot have both. And what's beautiful about this, hey Bob, hey Ron, is that you don't necessarily have to make any more time for this. 
I mean, the things that we're talking about, writing down 10 things you're grateful for, it takes like a few minutes. Doing your rock at the end of the night, you're gonna be thinking about something anyway, right before you go to sleep, right? So why not steer your thoughts to the results that you want and in the energy that you want and the kind of emotions that you want and the things that fuel and feed life rather those than those that fuel and feed misery, unhappiness, and ultimately um, death because our cells respond to every thought that we have on a physical, neurological level, right? I've said it before in the very first part of this challenge that when we have that gratitude feeling, there are over 1,200 chemicals that are released from our brains that go into our cells and they heal them, they repair them, they strengthen the immune system, they remove toxins. So on a physical level, your body is healing and repairing itself. What a better way to go to sleep, right? Than when you're in that kind of an energy and your body is able to then deepen its healing and restoration of yourself, making you more stronger and more capable and better able to do things. That's just on a physical level. We're not even talking about spiritual, emotional, mental, and the things that you're attracting and drawing to you. So the idea that you don't have time to do this, you're going to be stuck in your pain forever <laughs> because Idea, ultimately, what it is, is we all had the same amount of time. We're all thinking things all the time. We're all feeling things all the time. So it's just choosing where you want those same thoughts to go. And you get to choose that. So beautiful stuff. I hope you appreciate this. It's been completely life-altering and changing for me personally. And I'm grateful for everyone who is going into this uh, challenge at 100% and being willing to do these small, simple things that make profound differences, not just in the long term, but also in the short term, you're going to see immediate change um, happen right away. All right. So today is magical health. All right. Virgil, a Roman poet says the greatest wealth is health. I'm going to put this here so I can focus on you all. Hey, Jennifer, you're welcome, Bob. Absolutely. Okay. So yesterday was relationships. Today's health. Health is the most important, precious thing in life. And yet more than anything else, we can take our time, our health for granted. For many of us, the only time we think of our health is when we lose it. Oh, that is so, so true. Anyone fighting a sickness right now? Oh my goodness. Then you realize how nice it is just to feel normal, right? My kids are going through strep throat right now. So we're kind of there too. <laughs> Then the realization hits us, without our health, we have nothing. There's an Italian proverb that speaks the truth about health for many of us. He knows, oh, sorry, oh my goodness, it's tiny text, I need to get my glasses or something. He who enjoys good health is rich, though he knows it not. While we rarely think of our health when we are well, we will have felt the truth of those words even when you had something minor like a cold or the flu and you were bedridden. When you are not well, all you want is to feel better and nothing else matters other than having your health back again. Health is a gift of life. It is something you receive and continue to receive each day. In addition to everything else we do to be healthy, we have to be grateful for our health to continue to receive more health. Remember, whoever has gratitude for health will be given more and he or she will have an abundance. Whoever does not have gratitude for health even what he or she has will be taken from him or her. You may know of people who choose a healthy lifestyle and yet still lost their health. Giving thanks in return for the health you are receiving is vital. When you are grateful for your health, you will not only maintain your current health, at the same time, you will set the magic into motion to increase the flow of health to you. You will also begin to see the improvements to your health happen right away. Little aches, pains, moles, scars, or marks will start to magically disappear, and you will notice your energy, vitality, and happiness increase markedly. As you will learn in a later practice, through the daily practice of gratitude for your health, you can improve your eyesight, hearing, and all of your senses, along with every function in your entire body, and all of it happens like magic. Gratitude is a vaccine, an anti antioxidant, and an antiseptic. John Henry Jowett, a Presbyterian preacher and writer. The degree that you are grateful for your health is the exact degree that your health will magically increase. And the degree that you're not grateful is the exact degree that your health will decrease. Living with a decreased amount of health means your energy, vitality, immune system, clarity of thought, and every other function of your body and mind is weakened. Being grateful for your health ensures that you will continue to receive more health to be grateful for. 
And at the same time, it eliminates stress and tension in your body and mind. Scientific research studies have shown that stress and tension are at the root of many diseases. Studies have also revealed that people who practice gratitude heal faster and are likely to live seven years longer. You can see in the state of your health right now how grateful you have been. You should feel amazing every day. If you feel heavy and life feels like a real effort to get through, or if you don't feel younger than your age, then you are living with decreased health. One of the major causes of this loss of vitality is a lack of gratitude. All of that is about to change though, because you are going to use gratitude's magical power for the health of your body. The magical health practice begins with reading through the following paragraphs about the health of your body. After you read each italicized line for a particular part of your body, close your eyes and mentally repeat the italicized line, feeling as grateful as you can for that part of your body. Remember that when you think about why you're grateful, it will help you feel gratitude more deeply. And the deeper you feel it, the faster you will feel and see the amazing results in your body. Think about your legs and feet. They are your main form of transportation in your life. Think about all the things you use your legs for, like balancing, standing up, sitting down, exercising, dancing, climbing steps, driving a car, and most of all, the miracle of walking. Your legs and feet allow you to walk around your home, walk to the bathroom, go to the kitchen, get a drink, walk to your car. Your legs and feet allow you to walk around st stores, down the streets, through an airport, and along the beach. The ability to walk gives us freedom to enjoy life. Say thank you for my legs and feet and really mean it. Think about your arms and hands and how many things you pick up and hold in one day. Your hands are the major tools of your life and they are in nonstop use all day long every day. Your hands allow you to write, eat a meal, use a phone or computer, shower, get dressed, use the bathroom, pick up things and hold them and do everything for yourself. Without the use of your hands, you would be dependent on other people to do things for you. Say thank you for my arms, hands, and fingers. Think about your amazing senses. Your sense of taste gives you so much pleasure multiple times throughout the day as you eat and drink. You know from losing your sense of taste through a cold that the joy of eating and drinking disappears without being able to taste food or drinks. Say thank you for my amazing sense of taste. Your sense of smell enables you to experience the beautiful fragrances of life, flowers, perfumes, clean sheets, dinner as it's cooking, a fire burning on a winter's night, the air on a summer's day, freshly cut grass, the smell of the earth after rain. Say thank you for my wonderful sense of smell. If you didn't have a sense of touch, you would never know how hot from cold, soft from sharp, or smooth from rough. You would never be able to feel objects or physically express love or receive it. Your sense of touch allows you to touch your loved ones with a reassuring hug and to feel the touch of a hand from one human, um, the touch of a hand from one human being to another is one of the most important things in life. Say thank you for my precious sense of touch. All right, my little girl needs me. So there are more here that I would encourage you to go through on your own, okay? And then go through this card and you're going, okay, so she says, get a card and write on it in big, bold letters, the gift of health is keeping me alive. And then we're going to keep that card with us and look at it frequently throughout the day. And then today on at least four separate occasions, when you see the words, read them very slowly, one word at a time and feel as grateful as you can for the gift of health. Being grateful for your health is essential to keep your health, but also to guarantee that it continues to get better. While with increasing energy and zest for life, if gratitude were used in conjunction with conventional medicine, med medical treatments, we would see a health revolution and a recovery rates and miracles like we've never seen before. Awesome. So I have um, studied the scientific evidence as well, and there are studies that have proven that gratitude even heals our hearts. There was a seven-year study on um, patients with heart damage, and those that had practiced gratitude had healthier, stronger hearts and less likely to have heart disease, um, stress, and tension in their bodies. So it's incredibly powerful. I have been on, um, on both sides of health. Right, most of my life I've been exceptionally healthy, but at the age of 29, as you guys, most of you know, I was diagnosed with cancer, and there was a time in my life where I was completely unable to take care of myself. Um, I had just had a baby, and then six days later, I had to go in for reconstructive breast surgery, which um, 
they had to cut through muscle. And so I had no use of my arms. I couldn't hold my baby. And it was exceptionally painful to do even the smallest, smallest things. So that perspective has given me a huge sense of gratitude and appreciation for our physical bodies. They are truly, truly incredible gifts. And nourishing our bodies with both gratitude as well as nourishing food, nourishing ideas, nourishing relationships, nourishing nour nourishing spaces, nourishing movement um, is so powerful and so healing for us. When we don't have that physical health, it's hard to do anything. So definitely having the gratitude for it. So if you guys are in, if you guys are going to do this today, hey Derek, go ahead and let me know you're in and let me know tomorrow how you did with this, this gratitude of our health. I hope that you guys are all well and we'll see you tomorrow.